What's up guys? And welcome back to Hunter Adventures. This is one of our first, well actually the first, airsoft review from our new little studio we got going on here. Uh, you By now you've probably seen it in maybe another video or two possibly and you're going to see that things are changing and they're going to continue changing. We're still getting things right. We're waiting on some special stuff to go here. So we're leaving some room but enough of that. Today we've got a really special gun that I want to talk to you about and it is the ICS Mars Carbine and this is a rather unique gun. Uh, it has the split gearbox so the potential I thought myself for having a very versatile gun was it was there but uh, as I'm finding out some of the potential I thought might be there isn't quite there. Um, now this is a very high-end gun and yes it is rather expensive. It's more expensive than say what you would commonly get in your uh, Lancer Tacticals and things like that. Most things that people commonly pick up for moderate gameplay. But the features of this gun is the machining, the build, it is all solid as a rock. It is built like a tank. There is no doubt about that. And it is very unique. It actually has some features that I prefer on my real steel rifles, which is the cut down rail on the forearm and it's a little behind. It does have the key mod, which I use in real life. I use a lot of key mod. Uh, nothing wrong with it. I don't mind the look of it. Some people do. But mm, I think the new ones are all M lock. This was probably, I just, it's not been that long ago. I got it from Fox Airsoft. And as always, Fox was great. Uh, I can't say enough good things about Fox. Matter of fact, uh, to tell you what kind of customer service they have, after I ordered this about maybe a week or two, uh, a letter showed up from Fox and it included a Fox Airsoft patch and it was a letter wanting to know if I had any problems, if I needed anything, had any questions and that they appreciated my business and that to me is, that is top notch customer service. I mean. Bear in mind, Fox on their website, they may not have quite the selection that some of the other guys do, but you cannot go wrong buying from Fox. But other than that, straight out of the box, I had to tinker with this thing a little bit. The bucking was actually, or packing, however you, whatever you want to say. Some people call it a packing, some people call it a bucking. It was actually pushed too far forward up on, yeah, I don't even know how it happened, but somehow an assembly, uh, the bucking wasn't seated right, and this thing, the PBs would just drill out the barrel, and I said, no, there's no way. This thing had already been doing better than that. So uh, I had to break her down, take her completely apart, and I found it. And that's when I discovered that while this gun is a really great gun straight out of the box and it should be for the money but you're gonna have a hard time fitting with parts and the first thing I discovered was the aluminum barrel they used I wanted steel I wanted to change the hop up and I quickly found out that just about the ICS uh, hop up chamber is the one you got to use for it you're not gonna be able to put some of your pro winds and stuff like I had one laying around on the bench and I was going to try it out and try a different barrel and I said you know what I decided just to put it all back together and got it working got it functioning right and it does pretty good uh, I've settled on 3.2 gram BBs right now because well I, I went all over the place with the weights and the point three twos were probably where I had the best accuracy versus distance uh, versus time to target because even as strong as this gun is the higher gram BBs just 
a really big art and taking a lot of time to get there. Other than that, the the accuracy really degraded once I went up on the hop up to really push them out there. So I felt like the hop up and the bucking was working a little bit too hard. So three twos that seemed to be for now a sweet spot. Uh, I threw on the Monstrum scope, got it off of Amazon, got a lot off of Amazon. This light is really, I've really been enjoying this light. So uh, I can't remember exactly which one it was. It was like 30 bucks for the whole setup, so it's not that bad at all. It's really, it's, it's a really nice little setup. But my intentions at first were to use this gun as a kind of a, uh, a versatile gun that I could go from, say, playing as an assault to playing as a DMR because this gun actually has a true quick change spring system and when I say true I mean really true because there's the whole upper part of your gearbox assembly and you can take a Phillips or even you can take a Allen wrench or even a Phillips uh, and shove it in there, push in, turn, spring is changed, pop her back in there, and you're ready to go. And which is great if I wanted to do CQB and then because I'm going to play both CQB and field. So if I do want to run this gun in the CQ, CQB fields, then there I go. It doesn't take much to swap it out and you're ready to go. But, being that uh, this gun just really, just really hasn't met my expectations to be able to turn into a DMR. Uh, the accuracy is not there. I'd really have to fool with the, with the bucking a lot, I think. Uh, I definitely would probably have to send off, because I've tried my hand at it, I'm no good at R hops, and it would definitely probably have to be R hopped. I don't think a flat hop's gonna get it in this gun, for whatever reason. But other than that, the receivers, the handguard, all the machining, the metal, the finish is spectacular on this gun. It is awesome. Uh, you probably will not find better. You, you will find some that will match, but you will not find any better than the ICS fit and finish. Which takes me to the next thing, the magazines. I had heard they were picky, but even with the high cap that come with the gun, at first when I tried to do that, it wouldn't even work. And see, I got a full to press over here, and it takes that much to get the mag out. But then what I found was if I come over to this side, it slide right out. Now, the funny thing was. It would not work with the ICS high cap at first, but it would work with a hex mag, which I know a lot of people don't even like the hex mags. And I've got a few, and they run pretty good. I don't have any complaints out of them. And they actually work with this gun fairly well. Click right here. Now, let's see what happens. Oh, they even drop away a little better. But you still have to push over here. Now, what I found was they've got the springs wrong, the tightening wrong. This should be more level, which will pull that other side in, which will give it more throw. And it will also, the magazine catch in here is sticking out way too far. And the only way to get this thing to work would I really have to jiggle the magazine around to get it to go in, to get it engaged. But, uh, now this is after a little break in, I really, 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 really worked with putting mags and pulling them in this thing. But right now I've got three mid caps and some people say no other mid caps except for uh, maybe the ICS ones. And then some people say the ICS mid caps don't even work. So right here we've got a hex mag, locks in, comes out. We've even got the Evix uh, BAMP magazines. Lock 
locks in, comes out. Now this one, I haven't tried it. This will be the first time I've tried it lately since I've been tinkering with it a little bit. But this is the Elite Force mid caps, and I do like the Elite Force mid caps. And it it upset me because the first time I tried them, they did not work at all, and they still don't work. I mean, it is really, really now. If you depress the magazine release, you can get it to go in. But even with doing that with the Elite Forces, I had some feeding problems and it definitely doesn't want to come out. You gotta come over here and pull it out and we got some BBs. So other than that, uh works fine. And these the hex mags and the Ebic mags have been feeding fine for me. I've run several magazines through them. And I've run several magazines through this gun. It's at least a couple thousand round count through this gun now. Uh, it is electric blowback. Uh, pretty neat little feature. Uh, you do actually get a little bit of recoil feels like off of it. It's uh, it's pretty strong uh, More than your standard AEG and that's maybe just for the simple fact It's got it's it's got to have a high spring in it because it's shooting pretty hot uh, It's it's got to have like maybe a M125 spring Possibly an M130 But it it is it is shooting pretty hot uh, the gun feels great. It shoulders great. The one to four works really good with this gun. And the reason I like the one to four because when it's a when it's a one to four and it's a good one, you can shoot both eyes open and still see all of your target. Okay, so you can use it in those up close CQB situations. But when the targets get on out and you want to ramp up to four power and see them a little bit better you kind of get into that marksman DMR uh, it helps you reach out and see what's going on in the rest of the field and helps you put on target just a little bit more and yeah you can always follow your BBs when you're shooting but those first shots when you got that guy that just is hanging out around that tree it is nice to be able to put that first shot on target so that he doesn't know and hide a little bit better but other than that we're fixing to go out and we're going to do a little chrono with two O's just to set a standard and then we're going to see what we can do on the range with some three twos. So let's go. So for the range test we're going to have two different targets here. first one here is at 120 feet. The second one will be at 175, and as you see, 175 is in the room, uh, not much past 180, and the BBs are really dropping off probably. And here I decided to take you guys along with me on a little slow speed run on our free time.
And so that was it, guys. Uh, not a bad gun at all. Uh, I really like it. Though I be keeping it, I'm not real sure. Uh, there's a lot of guns out there I want to try, and this one may have earned a spot here in the armory. I don't know. But I do have to apologize for the chrono footage got lost, but it was shooting really hot around 430, 440 feet per second. And oh yeah, that sound right there, that's the disconnect when you go to safe and it cuts the electronics off. And in my opinion, every gun should have that on it. But until next time, we'll see you guys on the next adventure.